I said, what? She said, I was so sorry my titties. If you're totally like President Clinton for me. <laughs> mm. I said, oh, oh man, young lady, that's so sick. That was so sick. Welcome to This Is Not Happy. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. We live in uncertain times. Sometimes the Wi-Fi is no good. Sometimes your condom breaks. The important thing to remember is that Plan B is affordable. saved uh, in the French Quarter uh, by cops on, on horseback because I was about to be thrown into the trunk of a car because I played Bill Clinton <laughs> for 14 years on Saturday Night Live. <clears throat> now, I mean, let, let's, let's be real. They offered me a lifetime deal. You can work here forever. It didn't sound bad to be on SNL forever. It sounded really good to me until I got my second death threat. Until they started hauling me into NBC in the same tunnel that Obama goes through. In a secret tunnel because people wanted to kill me. Not because I was Clinton, because I played him. Do you want to know how obsessed Earth was with him at this time? Okay, and, and not with me. Uh, women would hit on me and then get disappointed because I'm not him. <laughs> like literally I would go out with women and you could see it come over their face like, what? <laughs> I thought he would be more interesting. <laughs> He's so average and Bill Clinton is not. <laughs> All right, colonoscopy story. This is how bad it got. So I'm gonna, I, I was pretty scared. I'd never had a colonoscopy. I'd never been touched there. I'd never been, let's say, entered <laughs> by a th anything, <laughs> let alone something with a camera in it, and then made of metal. I was a little scared. The second it touched me, I made this sound. It touched me in the area. In the area. I made this sound. It upset me so much. When I was touched in the area, I made a falsetto sound. Involuntarily, I went, Now here's how bad it got. The second I made that noise, uh, the second it touched me, the anesthesiologist leans into me and says, what would Clinton say? <laughs> I, I said, he would say, what is a nice girl? <laughs> like, like you doing in a place like that. <laughs> I was under duress and I, I felt hostile. Uh, I'll tell you one more quick, awful story. Iowa State University, I'm walking back to my car after the show and a co-ed falls to me to my car and says exactly like this, Mr. Hammond, I was so flush you if you talk like Bill Clinton for me? <laughs> now I said, what? 
I knew what she said, I just wanted to hear it again. <laughs> no one ever offered to flash me, man. You got it? She's offering to flash. <laughs> I said, what? She said, I was so sorry of my titties. If you're kind of like President Clinton for me. <clears throat> I said, oh man, young lady, that's so sick. That is so sick. <laughs> I, I want to, I, can I confess, I wish I were a better person. <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, 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 I moved, uh, I retired from SNL after my second death threat because I couldn't be funny with FBI guys looking for a killer. <laughs> Got it. I might get shot, but here's a joke. I couldn't do it. I ended up retiring. Um, I ended up moving to New Orleans. I, I, I filmed a pilot down there and I loved it so much that I lived there, okay. So, I saw my first New Orleans Saints football game. I'd never been to an NFL game. I'd never seen, I didn't know there were humans that large. I'm not making a joke. I didn't know people were that big. I didn't know they ran as fast as cars. Like I said to my friend, he goes, it looks like a car is chasing Drew Brees. He's like, it's the NFL, dude. You'll love it. And I did. Loved it. Afterwards, I say, where's the best hamburger in, in the French Quarter? And everyone says, this place called Yo Mama's. And I go to this place to get a hamburger. And I'm sober now. OK, I've had my bout with, the, with you know, stuff. <laughs> so I'm in there eating a the hamburger, really feeling good. You know, feeling good in New Orleans, man. And I feel a hand on my back. It's sliding across my back. I hear a voice say exactly like this, we thought you might want us to shit with you. Uh, as these two giant dudes get in the booth across from me, I knew I, knew I was dead. I was, you know, <laughs> You know, your humans kind of know when they're getting killed. I don't know how. I, I knew I was going to be in the trunk of a car. And, and, and these guys had this look on their face. Watch this look. <laughs> See this? <laughs> I was so f scared, but... I was, in, I was in some sort of survival mode. I said, yeah, I'd love to hang out with you guys. Uh, I'm just going to use the bathroom. So I get up and go to the bathroom, and I go to the waitress, and I go, D do you sit at each other's tables in New Orleans or something? She went, no, he's a creep. <laughs> hang on, I'll handle it. She goes out in the street in New Orleans night. Now, two minutes later, these guys, these cops, I'd never heard of French Quarter cops. Different cops. Mardi Gras, they got to be different. <laughs> so these guys, I swear that they were as big as the New Orleans Saints. As big as the Saints, man, on these horses. And I'm like, and they pull up. And I said, listen, uh, I went outside and I said, officer, uh, there was a problem. But I'm going to go home. Because I don't want, you know, I love your city. I, I don't want a problem. He said, exactly like this, he said, there ain't gonna be no problem. <laughs> I said, shit, the Terminator is a black dude. <laughs> like, the baddest ass ever is, is a black dude. He's the ter Because these guys were just built for this. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> They're getting off their horses and they're limbering up like they're getting ready to play, <laughs> getting ready to play tennis. And I'm just like talking about what they're going to do this weekend. Now, everyone in the bar knows who they are. They're French Quarter cops on those big horses. And everyone shuts up. The first guy walks in. He walks up to the table and he goes, how y'all doing? If termites spoke, 
they probably sound like these guys did now. They're like, me doing fine. <laughs> it's a wonderful evening, Emily, and we were just going home to get you with you. The guy says this to them. <clears throat> you know, uh, in the French Quarter, <laughs> life is all about choices. The choices we make will determine how we live the rest of our lives. Will you live your life as a person, for instance, who was tuned up? We don't tune people up. Tune up by police mean they have a headache. We alter. When you're altered by us, you wake up the next morning with a speech impediment. <laughs> what y'all gonna do? The guy went, me, don't you, you're going to go home. <laughs> we had planned to leave me already. We were just getting up to go. No, we don't want to leave me. And they walk out of this place. I mean, it's more like, <laughs> and they walked past the guy's horse who had walked into the bar and was watching with interest. What? Are y'all gonna need me? Cause I, I don't play, man. I fuck a motherfucker up. Like, I'm no, no, come on. Cause they used their horses in crowd control. He thought he was gonna be in on this. He, I said, hey officer, thank you. Uh, I never actually saw anything like that. He went, something we do every evening. Why don't you sit down and enjoy your dinner and welcome to New Orleans. And I said, I want, yeah, I want to have my dinner. And I sat down and I had my great hamburger. I started to eat and I watched him walk out the door and get up on his horse. And he started to pull on the reins. But just before he pulled on the reins, he looks back at me and he says, by the way, I love the way you do Bill Clinton. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bill Clinton! <laughs>